Hello, beautiful people. Here I am on a Wednesday night talking about dreams live here on Instagram. In this video, I'm going to follow up the conversation I had last week on lucid dreams, but I also want to talk about um, the in-between, right? So that was one of the things I wanted to talk about last week when I was talking about lucid dreams and how um, sometimes when you are in the experience of the lucid dream, you come out and you're kind of in this in-between space. And I don't, I don't know if everyone, I'm sure not everyone experiences this, but I sometimes wake up in sleep paralysis. And I've talked to other people that I know that experience sleep paralysis and they also have had the same experience. So I want to talk a little bit about this in-between space, whether it's coming out of a lucid dream or just coming out of your wake, ex your dream experience in general. And if you have any questions, a phone call because I forgot to. Okay, sorry about that phone call coming in. And so I just put my phone on do not disturb, forgot to do that. Um, but yes, yeah, so if you have any questions about lucid dreams, about sleep paralysis, or really any questions about dreams in general, please feel free to post them right here in the comment, and I would love to chat with you. If you have a dream that you want to share and you want to come on live, that would be awesome too. I also want to share, before I get into this, that I am still offering my 25-page dream guide in which I give steps and, um, I guess you could say, points and guidance with how to create your own dream practice, um, specifically over the course of a 28 day period. And these notes that I, or this guide is essentially my notes, my organized notes from when I facilitated the dream circle. So all of the topics that I hit within the dream circle, that being how to um, set up your bedtime ritual, your dream journal, how to look at the astrology in relation to your own charts um, when it comes to dreams, also dream symbols, dream genres, how to um, interpret the dreams, embody what comes forth from the dreams. So there's a lot in this guide. So if you're interested in creating your own spiritual dream practice, you should definitely check that out. The link is in the bio. Um, so yeah, I, um, I'll start by kind of, like I said, picking up where we left off last week. And I was talking about how I have been, like I have the intention or the goal of uh, a lucid dream experience or essentially inducing the lucid dream that I am um, wanting to experience. And so I mentioned how I've been having a recurring um, symbol, which is a house that's been popping up in my dream recently. And it's been two houses. Um, one is my grandmother's house. And she had, this was that last house she lived in before she transitioned. And my mother and I lived there with her at the end of her life. We were, you know, taking care of her. Um, and then the other house is my mom's current house, which is very similar, like a similar, like a townhouse, similar style as my grandmother's house. So both of those dreams have been showing up repeatedly over the past, I want to say, two months, um, probably a little bit longer, but my intention wasn't there. And But I would say definitely for two months. And the main thing that has been really um, that brought forth my curiosity to it's like induce a lucid dream and go to those houses is because whenever I'm in the house upstairs and sometimes even the knowing of the basement there's something spooky where I don't want to go up there or go down there and I just want to get out of the house um, most of the time my grandmother is present and I don't want to engage with her at all which is unlike you know, the experiences I've had with my, my grandmother in dreams um, prior to these dreams. So there's something here that I am not, my unconscious or maybe my conscious self is not wanting to, to know or to see. And in my actually awake conscious self, I, I want to know, I'm like, what is in there? And so I have an intention to induce 
the lucid dream so I can go into the house, right? And so last time I was on here, I talked about, I was like, yes, I have an intention and I'm gonna move forward with this. And so I will share about what has happened since then. So I have a question here. Um, Celestial Vision says, when you're astral traveling, what dimensions have you visited? Okay, so I'll get to that in a second. Um, so essentially where I am now from when I did the, uh, when I had the last live is, I haven't induced the lucid dream and I do, I feel it's because of what I'm going to speak about now when it comes to intentionally wanting to, to lucid dream or even say astral. I So astral travel and astral projection, I view as different things, right? And so astral projection, I view as when you actually leave your body in a more awake, conscious state, right? And you, it, it's that typical stereotypical um image of someone being like projecting out of their body um as they're laying down and i've had that experience and have literally looked at myself sleeping that was a completely different experience from when i astral travel and i'll explain that here in a second um but when i do intentionally either try to astral project um or even lucid dreams, I tend to wake up in sleep paralysis in the in-between. So I feel there's some sort of fear there with wanting to induce this lucid dream state. And so I haven't done it yet. However, I think this morning I was in that house just like naturally, but it wasn't, again, I wasn't lucid in the dream, right? And so I want to share a little bit about that in-between space. But I do want to answer oh happy new year thank you happy new year everyone so i do want to answer celestial visions question and like i said if you all have questions about dreams astral travel astral projection any of that stuff feel free to to leave it here in the comment and we can chat about it so um as far as astral traveling what dimensions have you visited I don't know if I can say dimensions specifically, but when I astral travel and there was a period where I was doing it pretty consistently, it was a part of, you could say, my like morning ritual. This is when um, this was back in, in 2017, which is when I fully devoted myself to just living in a spiritual, sacred place like this is going to be my life or just sacred every day in devotion to my spiritual path and work and so I had quit my job that I was waiting tables so I quit my job full um and just started doing this full time and so during that period I would wake up and I would and at this time I was also doing a lot of like I was taking classes for channeling and mediumship and a part of a community with that. So I was opening everything up. And so when I did my my daily travels, right, what I would do is I would lay a blanket on my floor and put some crystals around me. And sometimes I would I would always have like a quartz up here at the crown, um, like a quartz tower or a quartz sphere. And then I would have um, two crystals usually amethyst or quartz at my feet. And then I would have like, if I'm laying like this, like almost like basically a five pointed star, I would have two more crystals at my hands, right? Where my hands would be. So it was like, I created this sacred, you know, energetic shield almost. And I didn't really, that's just something I felt called to do. I didn't really like, no one told me to do that. And so I would also listen to high frequency music usually like tibetan singing bowls or some sort of high like very like bell like frequencies um that was just something for me that helped me to like basically leave the space and um usually whenever like once i got into the groove and started really being able to let go and release i would tend to one my my spirit guide at the time which was mary magdalene and this is i never talk about this so this is interesting i'm talking about it on <laughs> instagram live because it can sound crazy um but yeah so mother or mary magdalene would come in and i would always like kind of hear her 
maybe like all around me, right? Like if you would imagine like God's voice where you're just like hearing it from above or around you, that's how I would hear Mary Magdalene. And she was my guide whenever I did astral travels. And so what I remember, and this could be possibly traveling to another dimension. Um, in my case, I felt it was more like traveling to different realms or which could be the same thing as dimensions, right? And different lifetimes for sure. But I would always go through this like long, dark black tunnel, right? And I almost like it felt like the void, like I was in the in-between, speaking of in the in-between. I was in this long void tunnel type um, and then I would end up in another in another realm. And so I feel that um, the realms that I, I can say I've been to, of course, like ancient Egypt was an experience somewhere like ancient Greece or Italy or maybe not necessarily ancient, but maybe like Renaissance time. Um, and sometimes I would just end up in random like voids or spaces where... There's like, I can't, you know, what I can't, it's even hard to explain, but I like, I hear it and I feel it, but I could say like almost like bubbles, like a reality where it's not like, I couldn't say it definitely wasn't earth, right? So Egypt and Italy was definitely a past lifetime type situation, but these other little bubbles and experiences, like I remember one being like this big library, um, but not like you know, it wasn't on earth. It was just like being in a portal in a library. So um, that's been something that has I've experienced. Um, but I'm curious if you all if you all have astral travel, what, you know, came up for you? And do you know if you were in like another dimension um, and what that speaks to you? And I've definitely done group um, meditations. I was working with um, she's on she's here on Instagram. Her name is Kelly Archangel Raphael, but her guide is Archangel Raphael and her connection is very strong. And she had this whole starseed masterclass and I did that. So it was a group of us and we did these like deep travels together and did a lot of like you could say healing for the planet and also like going into our own personal life records and timelines. And so there was like a lot of travel through that. And most of them were kind of like anchored in like earth lifetimes and experiences, but also in connection to, you know, other, yeah, you could say dimensions or planes of, of existence. So that's kind of my um, connection to that. So thanks for asking. And, you know, it's really interesting because that in between space, it, it like comes up in meditation a lot. As far as for me, it is like that darkness, that that void type of experience. And then when it comes to like from dreams, like if I'm in a dream or I've been sleeping, because sometimes it'll happen even if I don't remember dreaming. It's like I wake up. And for me, as I was saying when I first began the chat, is that I wake up in sleep paralysis. Right. And so if you're not familiar with sleep paralysis, essentially it is you waking up in a state in which like you really are like your body is physically paralyzed you try to speak and like nothing comes out even though like i would scream or yell someone's name and there's like nothing and you yeah you can't move but you can kind of like your senses are turned on and they're also feels like they're amplified and so you tend to like hear things like people hear um things walking around or ringing sounds like like frequency changes i feel also you tend to like some people see things but usually dark shadows and it's always like this very like dark presence like it's this really like intense like eerie vibe when you are in that state of sleep paralysis and so i think personally that is why i have been having um, some difficulties when it comes to inducing the lucid dream state because I just, yeah, I'm a little bit in fear of, you know, um, experiencing sleep paralysis. So I'm curious if anyone on here has any experience with sleep paralysis, with um, astral travel, astral projection, and I would love to hear about that. Mm. I will say that 
for me, they tend to lucid dreams, astral projection and sleep paralysis tend to all kind of bleed into each other. And what I've experienced and what I've heard from others and read is that if you're someone that has sleep paralysis, you uh, you have you may have like an easier time going into a lucid dream state or astral projection. And so if you know, if you're watching this and you have had, you know, sleep paralysis and say if you experience it again, because it is really alarming and it it took me years to finally be like, I wouldn't even say I'm OK with it, but to really just be able to calm myself. Right. And to make it a productive experience. And, and what I mean by making a, a productive experience is that if you calm yourself and you're in that sleep paralysis moment, you can astral project intentionally, right? So if you're in that moment, just take deep breaths and just set your intention, like focus. And I was just saying this over and over in my head as I was in the sleep paralysis, I was like, I wanna astral project, I wanna astral project, I wanna astral project. And this is the only time I've done it intentionally and I saw myself like I floated out of my body and up to the ceiling, saw myself, freaked out, and then like came back into my body. So that was one of the times I, the only time I intentionally astral projected and I haven't astral projected since then. So it's, um, it's really interesting. All right, we got some comments here from the resilient um, Restorator. Oh my gosh, I probably butcher that. I'm so, I'm sorry if I did, um, but uh, I'm gonna say the resilient. Okay, that'll be easier. Um, I used to have sleep paralysis all the time as a teenager, but I don't anymore. That's quite nice because, like I said, it can be really alarming. Um, SJFI says, I was the same. I was so close to breaking through the astral, but my breathing slowing and the entities I feel around me doesn't allow me to let go. But what was so close, but was so close once felt electric waves through, I'm assuming through your body. Okay, here's a follow up through my whole body, feet to head. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. So that's um, so I actually have a video um, that I did uh, like months ago. I think it was in October with my friend. Um, he's his name is Kettle Buddha here, but we were talking about sleep paralysis and astral projection. He's someone that experiences um, both and has done a lot of astral projection. I think he's done a lot. Yeah. Intentionally. And we both talked about that frequency. So from what I've read, right, if you're hearing something and you're feeling that vibration, like it feels like warmth, it feels like hovering that essentially from what I've read and essentially experienced is like your astral body separating from your physical body, which is crazy, but it really feels so true to me because when I set that intention, the one time I intentionally astral projected, the pitch in my ear got really, really loud. And I don't know if I remember feeling that that sensation in that moment, but when I astral travel and when I, when I was finally, I knew that I was like out and I was like doing my thing, whether it was traveling through lifetimes or being in this little bubble, I felt that hovering feeling and it's like almost like my body was vibrating and it was really, really warm. And it's in a way eerily comfortable when it's when you're relaxed in that state. Um, so, yeah, I, I totally felt that, too. OK, um, the real resilient says it was terrifying. Often there was a great creature on my chest weighing me down. Yeah, that's something I've I haven't experienced that, but I've that's like one of the main um depictions of sleep paralysis like someone experiencing sleep paralysis and yeah i was talking again to my friend lewis which is kettle buddha he said that he hasn't experienced that either but i think he felt something at his feet and i always feel something like usually on the side of me and i feel like i hear like i'm more audible so i see less but i hear everything that's going on around me and it's it's so freaking eerie um, oh, I can call you Pam. Okay, hello, Pam. Awesome. Uh, all good. I, I guess trying to rock while and sleep paralysis can help you to project. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I've always literally, 
and when you try to move and and I know you you've experienced this when you try to move in sleep paralysis it's it's crazy how hard and how tired like I feel so exhausted from trying to move my my body while in sleep paralysis and <clears throat> It's just an incredible experience and it's it's pretty wild and so um, I know since both of you were on here I'll just say another thing that I've read about sleep paralysis is that and you know this is the internet so I have no idea the relevance of this but the two people that I talk to pretty often that experience sleep paralysis both have a connection with ancient Egypt and they said a lot of people maybe not everyone but um, you know, some people may have some sort of connection with ancient Egypt. And that really spoke deeply to me because the ancient Egyptians had such a strong ritual when it came to sleep. And of course, when it came to, you know, death and really preparing them for their resurrection, right? And so even if you look at the, the burial chambers, you know, of the ancient Egyptians, of course, like the pharaohs and um, and things of that nature, you see like the hieroglyphs um, are in, they're actually spells in their scenes for, you know, the deceased. So they know, basically they're guided in the underworld to, as they, you know, come up against certain, you know, places or say like demons or whatever's going on in the underworld, they have the like the wisdom, the spells, and the protection to overcome those challenges so they can make it to, you know, whatever the last point is in the underworld, as you know, they are then judged, like their heart is weighed against the feather of my yachts. And then in that moment, it's decided if they resurrect, right? Or if, they're, if their soul is devoured by, I can't remember the name of the God that devours them. And so it's really interesting that I've always found it fascinating when um, just looking at the burial chambers and I'm always, and they actually, what's really interesting is that the Egyptians actually take their valuables there, like they're buried with that, right? And I always think about whenever I hear people say like, oh, you can't take this with you when you die, you can't do this and that, right? Like you're not gonna take your money or you're not gonna have that and then I think about the ancient Egyptians and not saying one way is right and one way is wrong, but I just think that it's really interesting that the ancient Egyptians were tapped into something that, you know, I mean, we could hope to tap in and experience in, in this like modern day lifetime, but I'm just so curious of what was going on, you know, in that time and like, where did all of this come from in a sense of like, why bring and I know the why is essentially of why they would bring their things there so that they can carry it with them through the underworld or have it with them when they are resurrected right so it's like it's not just that they're reborn it's more so that they're resurrected essentially as who they were like it gets kind of I mean it's it's pretty complex but it's really interesting and so there's something about that darkness that unconscious space that dream space like they took their dreams very seriously in ancient egypt they had temples like dream temples where people would come there if they had like bad dreams or you know omen bad omens and they wanted to also even seek healing through and guidance from the divine through their dreams they would go to the dream temples and you know seek that healing and also you know experience like they would also the priest um would give them you know herbal remedies that would induce dreams like specific dreams or maybe like a lucid state or something of that nature and they would do the healing or experience healing through the dreams right so dreams in that whole space was really powerful and significant to the ancient egyptians and of course other you know cultures too but there's something there about like the resurrection and so the resurrection specifically in relation to sleep paralysis is always kind of intriguing to me because i just think about that or even astral projection but i think about that just experience of the soul the astral body leaving the body and just you know so it makes sense that there's a connection 
really fr with between ancient Egypt and sleep paralysis. All right, let's see. SJFI says spirit bumps, yes. Um, so when I ate mushies, once all I saw when I closed my eyes was the walls of pyramids, all the pictures, and right before I said what I was seeing, my ex was like, oh my God, I see all our ancient scriptures. What? I would have fell over if I wasn't already laying down. Oh my goodness, I bet. How incredible to heal that way. Yeah, oh my goodness. So I feel, honestly, <laughs> I feel what I just mentioned about ancient Egypt and that connection. And then you having that experience, I wonder if you like really, there's a connection there. I mean, I would I would say yes. And that's that's really powerful. But yeah, so I mean, there's there's so much there. And many cultures have their own experiences, you know, with, um, with dreams as we do as just the human species and collective of just trying to better understand our connection with the divine. And what I really love is that, you know, in those ancient times, they perceive dreams as like direct messages from the gods or guidance from the gods, whether it be in the form of omens or in the form of it coming, like coming through as healing. And I know in different, like I do a Buddhist practice and a part of the practice speaks about the clearing of bad omens and bad dreams. And I've seen that come up a lot um, in, pra in spiritual practices, like more so like the traditional leaning towards the ancient is always a mentioning of like nightmares and bad dreams. And so it's just really interesting to think about what we experience and what we, you know, um, yeah, just what we all experience when it comes to to dreams and even the anxiety, the nightmares, the astral projection, the sleep paralysis, like that's something that it just, it carries on through time. It's like, you know, we are experiencing the same experience as they were, you know, in those times. And so I, that helps me feel connected to, um, and it really breaks down the actual timelines that, and the fact that we're all, you know, energy and we're all connected in some way. So I really, really enjoy that. And um, yeah, I wanna talk more about astral projection, um, sleep paralysis, lucid dreams, um, I didn't really have a plan on what I would talk about specifically because, like I said, I haven't had the ability to induce this lucid dream. And I, I'll close this up by sharing what I dreamt this morning. And it's really brief, but I was in a house again and it feels like when I'm visualizing it, it doesn't, it kind of looks like my grandmother's house, but it feels like her house. And this time I really felt like the connection to the upstairs floor. And so as I spoke about in the last live that houses, the house dream symbol represents, can represent aspects of our psyche that we have or have not connected with they represent different spaces within our psyche right and so usually or I guess not usually but what's been coming up for me and I've heard from other people is that sometimes if you're in a house especially if you're going to this house house often there can be a room that feels like eerie that feels haunted that feels like I don't want to go in there and that is said to be something that is, you know, something within your unconscious or within your psyche that you don't want to open up or you don't want to visit. And so in this dream that I had this morning or the dream that I was having up until this morning, the upstairs was one of those where I was like, I'm not going up there. And there's reasoning for that in my my waking life. And I shared that in the previous live. But in this dream, I actually was upstairs and there was like no big to do about going up there. I was just up there. Right. So there would be scenes where I was downstairs in like the main living area and then I would be upstairs. And I remember I was getting ready to do something and I was in another room upstairs and people like two people kept coming in the room and it was like weird. I was getting dressed and I felt like, why are you coming in here? Um which I know that's another thing of being naked in a dream and people seeing you. And so there's so many things going on, but if this is 
a part, if this is like that house symbol, I could say that I've been upstairs. And also, I also learned in this dream that there was someone living downstairs, which is my uncle. But in the dream, it was my uncle, but was a woman. And it it, it was weird because it looked like my uncle, but it was dressed as an older woman. So that was really interesting. And so there's a lot to unpack there. So, um yeah, I think my conscious just kind of took me into that space without me having to like do it at, in a lucid dream state. So that's pretty interesting. And so I'm excited to see what comes forth from that. But yeah, I want to talk more about lucid dreams and sleep paralysis and astral projection, all of that stuff. Um, and to see what experiences you have, because I learned from you guys too. And yeah, so um yeah, thank you for being here. This is awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. I really appreciate it. I'm going to upload the replay for those of you who didn't watch it from the beginning, and I will upload it to my YouTube channel too. So thank you so much for being a part of this today, and I plan to be here next Wednesday, and we'll see what comes up and what we talk about then. But in the meantime, have a good night and sweet dreams.